What is up awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Reviews and today we are reviewing the iZip Trails electric bike. All right, guys, so again, this is the iZip Trails electric bike. This is the third bike we have reviewed from iZip. We reviewed the Simi a while back and then also the E3 Brio. But of the three that we have reviewed from iZip, this is definitely the most mountain bike oriented electric bike that we have uh, tested so far from them. This thing starts for $14.99, so it's gonna be kind of the upper threshold, I guess, of the affordable or entry level electric bike. But like all of iZip's bikes, they do a really good job of of just, just deciding which components to upgrade, which components really matter to spend a little bit extra money on, and which components are okay to leave as entry level. So, you know, just like the other bikes from iZip, I think this is going to be one of the best bangs for your buck uh, for a true mountain bike for a pretty affordable price range. Some of the things that make this bike stand out to, to me, just like, again, all of iZip bikes is, this comes in two different frame styles, first of all. So the one we have here is the step through. So that top tube is slanted a little bit more downwards, makes it more approachable, easier to get on and off of. They've also got a step over, a traditional kind of like diamond frame um, electric bike, and that's available as well. They also have two different frame sizes for this, a medium and a large, uh, but they only have one color available right now on the website at the time of this filming, which is this color is kind of like, like a green gray. It looks actually really pretty in the sunlight. So what that means is there's really gonna be a model and a size, I just knocked over my water. There's gonna be a model and a size for pretty much everyone. And that's something you don't always find on electric bikes at this price point. Typically it's only one frame size, um, only one frame style definitely, but iZip kind of goes extra mile here to give something for everyone. Also, with this bike, and again, just like all of Isaac's bikes, check out the frame. You'll see that the battery there sits kind of in a recessed spot in the down tube. And that just shows that this is a custom frame from iZip. So they, they either designed this, they got it from somewhere, but this is a custom frame meant for electric bikes. It's not retrofitted. And again, that's just not something you always see for a bike at this price point of $14.99. These guys also have a two year warranty. Um, they're an established company. So there's kind of just a lot of like feelings of safety, I guess, uh, or comfort when buying from them. So. Uh, we've really come to like iZip. We've really come to like the products that they offer. So yeah, let's kind of let's dive into this and uh, talk about some of the specs here. So we'll start back here with the motor in this bike. The motor on the trails is going to be a 250 watt hub motor here in the back, which brings this bike up to a top speed of 20 miles per hour. It's gonna keep that as a class one, which is gonna be legal in almost every area to ride. You really shouldn't be having any issues with the law. I mean, maybe in the strictest of areas where they just don't, don't allow electric bikes in general, maybe not, but yeah, 20 miles per hour, uh, pedal assist only, that makes this a class one electric bike. And for those people who are worried about, you know, having issues with legality, this is going to be a good choice for you. It's also gonna be a little more acceptable, I think, to ride on, you know, some of these trails that are meant for analog electric bikes, just because it's not overly powerful. 250 watts, it's enough power to kind of give you a good boost. You know, you're gonna feel it, absolutely, but you still have to pedal. So you're still getting a workout. Uh, even on the ride here, it's kind of out of breath, you know? Um, as opposed to having a throttle, I did have to pedal quite a bit, but I don't know, it's just, it feels good. Um, now, one of the things that makes this bike really stand out is gonna be this pedal assist sensor. It's an advanced sensor from Suntour. So it's a cadence sensor and a torque sensor. Now what that means is the responsiveness of this thing is just really, really, really high. So whenever I start pedaling, 
the motor just instantly activates. As soon as I stop pedaling, the motor pretty much instantly deactivates. So there's no lag, there's no latency from the time I start and stop pedaling to the time the motor actually kicks out power. Also, what's really cool about the torque sensors here is that the amount of power that I get out of the motor is gonna correspond to how hard I pedal, how much torque I'm actually placing on the crank. So when I'm on flat ground and I'm just pedaling, I'm not gonna get as much out of this motor because I don't need as much out of it. But when I'm going up a hill and I'm putting a lot of torque on the cranks, then I'm getting the full power out of that motor. And it just leaves the feeling of that this bike is working with me as opposed to for me. You know, when you got the throttle, you got a cadence sensor, cadence sensors, they just kind of activate and they're on 100%, you know, when they turn on and it just kind of makes it feel like the bike can kind of get away from you. Um, this is one of those points, the upgrade points, I think Isaac did a really good job of choosing this uh, to upgrade. So, cause that's, that, that's not something that you see typically on electric bikes at this price point. The battery here, 36 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery in the down tube of the frame. It is locking and removable. It's gonna give us a max range of about 50 to 60 miles, depending on how you ride this thing. You know, max range is always an estimate. It just kind of depends on what kind of terrain you're, you're going on, what pedal assist level you're in, how heavy the rider weighs, you know, all those environmental factors. But because this is a mountain bike, because we do have the mountain bike knobby tires, that is going to, it is gonna cut our range a little bit and it's going to reduce it a little bit more than some of those, those the other estimates of 60 miles from the uh, from the semi and the brio on the battery itself this does have a quick little indicator to see how much juice is left it's one two three four bars here so 25 percent increments it's going to give you a pretty good idea of how much juice you've got left i like that because when i'm charging this thing off the bike i can just hit that little button and i can see how much juice is left um, how much how much more I need to charge this thing. Also, what's noteworthy about this battery, or I guess really the charger itself, is the charging port is right there, and it's a threaded charging port, and it's a, it's a threaded charging cable. So it actually screws into this little spot right here, and it makes it so that the charging cable is not going to come undone um, when it's charging. So I really like that. Let's see, where should we go to next on this bike? You know, I like the... Just the overall aesthetic of the Isaac bikes. They, each of these bikes, they do a good job of wire management. They look really clean. You can see the wires come, you know, from the handlebars here in the front. They thread into the down tube. And you can see that they spit out there at the bottom bracket. Just makes a really clean bike. I dig that. Here in the back and the front, we've got 180 millimeter caliper brakes here. Mechanical disc brakes from Tektro. Mechanical disc brakes are going to offer plenty of stopping power, not as much as hydraulic, but um, it is enough, I think. And, you know, that's one of those points where they, they could have chosen to upgrade that to hydraulic brakes, but uh, I mean, honestly, I don't think it's necessary on a bike with a 20 mile per hour top speed. If this was, you know, maybe like a class three or a class, like a pedelec or something that had like a 20 mile per hour or higher top speed, maybe I would be like, yeah, hydraulic disc brakes are necessary, but I think this one, the mechanical ones are fine here. Also, what's interesting is Isaac does not have motor inhibitors um, built in. So typically motor inhibitors are in the, in the brake levers. You squeeze the brake levers and it automatically cuts power to the motors. Um, these bikes don't have it. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably because they're a class one, there's no throttle. And I'm also guessing it's probably because it's a torque sensor. So you don't really need it. One of the biggest reasons to have um, motor inhibitors is for a cadence sensor because like we talked about that lag, that latency, you know, when I stop pedaling, the motor is still active. So if I hit the brakes, if I don't have motor inhibitors, or the cadence sensor, I'm gonna be fighting against the motor. But with the torque sensor, it's really not as important. And I'm guessing that's probably one of the things that, you know, Isaac decided to not spend money on that so they could upgrade the torque sensor, have disc brakes, and also <laughs> the suspension up here. This is the Suntour XCE suspension, 100 millimeters of travel, preload adjust and lockout. Um, these are actually pretty good shocks right here. They do a really good job of mitigating some pretty serious bumps. You can jump this bike a little bit. You can take it on some serious off-road trails. There's not a whole lot of like serious stuff around here, but anything like this, easy. Cakewalk for this bike. You could even do stuff, probably even like trying to jump over that log, you know, if you're skilled enough to, to do that kind of stuff. Um, this bike can handle it. That suspension can handle it. And um, yeah, and I like that. I mean, preload adjust is great because, you know, for heavier riders or lighter riders, you can adjust the tension 
you know, of the suspension and you can make it spongier or you can make it harder depending on just your riding style and, and kind of your terrain that you're tackling and your rider weight. So I really do dig that. Let's see, what else here? Small point, but uh, they did include Welgo pedals, which are pretty nice pedals. You know, they're kind of the entry level of Welgo, but that's a good, that's a good name brand. It's not like a, you know, it's not like a no name uh, pedal brand there. So that's, that's a nice little, I guess you'd call that an upgrade point. The handlebars um, are pretty nice. They're, they're pretty wide handlebars. Uh, the grips, they're just flat, you know, little rubber grips here, but they, they do feel nice and grippy. Um, but the handlebars are nice and wide and it does give that a good feeling of control when you're riding this. This is the widest handlebars that we've seen so far from iZip. In the back here on the side of the bike, we have a Suntour, or sorry, we have a Shimano Tourney uh, seven speed derailleur. That's, that's another one of those entry level components that we're talking about here that, um, you know, iZip did not decide to upgrade that. And I don't think that they needed to. The, um, the derailleur is not as important to upgrade in, in our opinion as some of the other components because one of the biggest you know benefits of having an upgraded derailleur is yes the performance is going to be a little bit better but really it's going to be about weight savings which just isn't as big of a deal for an electric bike when you've got that motor in the back here spitting out all that extra power um, you just don't need it so again on this motor by the way it's 400 watts of peak power 60 newton meters of torque which is which is pretty high for the torque there especially for a 250 watt motor now on the other hand they have uh, Shimano Acera trigger shifters right here. And that is an upgrade point. Typically on bikes at this price point, we'll see a Shimano SIS index trigger shifter or, or thumb shifter up here. And they're big and bulky. They're hard to access. They're hard to shift gears. This one though, it's speedy, it's quick, it's natural. And, and that's, that's a good upgrade point. I like that. On this side, we have the, the display. It's the same display that we've seen on all of the iZip bikes. It's just the Suntour uh, HESC display. A long press of the power button here will turn this on. It's a very simple display, not a lot going on here, but it's, uh, you know, it's easy to see this in direct sunlight and it, it kind of gives you just the most basic information really of speed, current speed, and battery level. So current speed is going to be right here, battery level right here, three bar battery indicator, uh, three different modes, eco, standard, and high. You can switch those with the arrow buttons right here. Uh, there's a light button, I guess, if there are lights uh, included. But I did not see a light in the package here for this bike. But because of that display, I think if you wanted to add an aftermarket uh, light, you could do that. One other aftermarket component we would recommend for this, um, and really for pretty much any electric bike, is going to be a, a seat post suspension. It, they're pretty easy to grab aftermarket, about 100 bucks or so for a pretty good one from um, a couple different brands, but that's just going to really smooth out the, the back end of this ride since, since this is a hardtail. It's going to make it feel a little bit more like a full suspension ride when you're in the saddle. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend that if you're planning on taking this on some on more serious off-road trails and if you're a type of rider who stays in the saddle more. Oh man, where else can we go with this? So we got quick release here on the saddle, on the seat post. So it means I can adjust the seat post here on the fly. The saddle itself is pretty active. It's gonna make, um, um, it's gonna make it a little bit easier to pedal. It's gonna get more, you're gonna be more efficient than a more relaxed saddle, which makes sense since this is a mountain bike. Same thing here on the front fork, so the front wheel, this is a quick release. So just undo that um, and I can take off this wheel in about five seconds if I'm traveling with the bike, whatever. This thing weighs about 52, 55 pounds, somewhere around there, which is not that bad, especially considering that it does have front suspension. Um, so it's, you know, it's a little bit lighter, I would say, than uh, some other full-size electric mountain bikes. And um, yeah, 6061, I believe, aluminum alloy for the frame, you know, strong construction, pretty average stuff there. But yeah, overall, man, this is a fun bike. And I think uh, the next thing to do now is take this beauty on a test ride. So here we go.
All right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the iZip Trails electric bike review. In summary, just like all of the iZip bikes we have reviewed so far, again, this is just a lot of value for the price of $14.99. iZip does a really good job of picking and choosing which components to upgrade and which components to leave as entry level for a somewhat entry level price electric bike. Again, some of the high points of this bike, just like all the Isaac bikes, is going to be the pedal assist sensor, which is an advanced sensor. So it's a torque sensor and a cadence sensor. It just gives for a very responsive feel, which is particularly important for a mountain bike where you're going to be navigating a little bit more tricky terrain and you need that responsiveness in the motor. You don't want a delay from the time you start pedaling to the time you stop pedaling because that might make you lose control. I also like that it does have 100 millimeters of suspension in the rear or in the front forks, extra wide handlebars, front and rear disc brakes, 250 watt motor. It's efficient, so it still gives us a range of about 50 to 60 miles, just depending. So this actually would prove as a good commuter or just for really going into the backwoods for some trails. Again, this is, I have to say it one more time, I just, I love the Isaac bikes, man. I love the, the fact that we have the different frame sizes to choose from, different frame types. Again, this does come in a medium and a large. This does come in a high step and a step through. So there's just a lot of options for everyone. I think this is gonna be a really good choice for those people who are looking to actually do some real mountain bike riding. Some of the other bikes from iZip that we have reviewed, you know, you can take them off road a little bit, like the Semi, the E3 Brio. Yeah, you can take those on some trails, but this bike, you can actually take it off road and, you know, hit some little jumps with it. You can do some technical trails and it's gonna hold up just fine. So anyways, guys, I hope you did dig this review. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will catch you guys next time.